so important that they were inc included in the stimulus package. Yes. So about two billion dollars have gone to creating new uh, uh, sources, new sites of care, as well as uh, construction of sites that maybe have been around for 20 years or more and uh, need some refurbishing mm -hmm. in order to accommodate uh, new needs, maybe dental clinics as, uh, that are coming in as part of those sites. So that investment has been very important to reach the people that you're talking about, mm -hmm. folks who uh, may not have health insurance or who do, uh, um, but, but uh, have a place to go mm -hmm. uh, if they um, have no place else to turn. And we have now in the United States over 7,000 sites like that. We have 7,500 health center sites, uh, as I said, many in, in Texas, uh, where people can, re can receive mm -hmm. high quality care. And this is where the self-reliability comes in uh, and self-responsibility, because that's where you learn about uh, whatever ails you and what you can do about it, um, whether it's obesity or hypertension or diabetes. Uh, this is where you're going to get most of your teaching. That is so true. It is a major focus for uh, our health centers to really help people uh, learn and know even more about how to keep themselves healthy. That can range from uh, classes on weight control. Uh, it can, uh, it, uh, there are a lot of classes that target uh, mothers uh, in terms of helping them learn how to take even better care of their children or a brand new infant, mm -hmm. for example. That investment upfront can save a lot of dollars on the back end, but it is a partnership with the people who receive those services. It's about working with them in partnership to keep mm -hmm. themselves and their families healthy. That's an important yes. investment. And that's going to be a great reduction of expenditures because right now many of them will go to an emergency room. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have a primary physician. They're not practicing prevention and whatever happens, they just go to the emergency room because they don't have a physician to call. But when, when they get brought through the community health centers, uh, much of that will disappear. That's the most expensive care that we can give, and much of that will be eliminated when, once we get people into the loop and get them directed to those community health centers so they can learn about how they take care of themselves even including some of the homeless people. Uh, we know that often outpatient care is difficult for them because they can't go home and soak this or cleanse this because they don't have a home, but more and more we're getting those shelters. So we expect everyone to take some responsibility uh, for themselves. As we cannot take all of that for them. We would break our system. Uh, but. We also have some mobile units mm -hmm. that get around. Uh, tell me a bit about those. We do, and, and mobile units can actually be found in some urban areas. Sometimes folks just associate them with sources of health care in rural areas, and they can be found there too, of course. They can extend the reach of uh, health care providers uh, to meet the needs of certain communities that uh, uh, are short of doctors and nurses and other health care providers. They really extend care into communities where there isn't enough care, mm -hmm. or sometimes, frankly, where there isn't any care. They can actually be pretty efficient, too. Uh, you, it's not uncommon to find in some parts of the United States, for example, mammogram uh, machinery on wheels. So yes. rather than every single tiny clinic, for example, having that technology, some communities will get together and they'll share that technology. So that mobile unit might be in one community one day and then in the mm -hmm. next community down the, down the road, uh, 30, 40, 50 miles away uh, the following day. So that can help avoid duplication of services right. and push the reach of healthcare providers right out to communities where otherwise folks would, could have a very difficult time. Mm -hmm. If they have to drive an hour and a half for a child to get a well baby checkup, for example, that's tough, especially for parents who are working. So yes. this can bring the health care services right to them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're working toward getting health records uh, on computers or uh, in um, uh, microfiche, and then wherever they go, the physician can pull that up. That saves great money because they'll know when they had certain tests, the results of those tests, and perhaps what they can avoid duplicating now. And that could happen whether they are uh, 
uh, in their hometown or on vacation in another state, uh, which I think is just a great source uh, to have available. All of this is going to take just a little investment from the front end, but just think of all the dollars uh, that we'll be saving. I know we've heard lots of ads about how much it's going to cost. Actually, in the long run, it's probably going to cost a lot less than we're paying now, but it'll take us a while to get there. It takes a while to get the records on computer. It takes a while to uh, get a direction, a redirection of people going to the community health centers that are running to the emergency room. So the implementation will start next year, but it'll be going on for 10 years almost uh, until it's all done. So I'm just really hoping we'll have that opportunity because I think we will see such an improvement in access to care uh, because we have become such an urbanized nation that they are still elderly that may live three or four miles from their next neighbor uh, and maybe 25 miles to drive someplace else to find a physician's office. But our mobile units can set up in those communities and that'll help them have access to their prevention care. Uh, so I, I just I feel good about the direction we're going because I think we'll finally see the real uh, purpose as well as the real use of this system that has been thought through uh, a lot to implement. Uh, I can see that many facilities closer together, medical centers and hospitals, can share in very expensive equipment. Some of the equipment costs three or four million dollars. Well, if you can put one that's going to serve four or five different facilities, uh, you're saving that much money. And I think that there'll be more for uh, paying a more highly qualified staff. Uh, we need so many more nurses, and, and we need a, n a number of new physicians as well. The, the, the drop-off has come from enrolling in school because they have gotten to the point where somebody else was telling them what to do instead of practicing. This will put the practice back in the physician's hands. Isn't that true? And, and you, you make two wonderful points, I think. One about health information technology and the importance of having access to a person's electronic health record mm -hmm. or medical record uh, and the difference that that can make. I am old enough to remember when I had a little bank book that was my bank account uh, uh, that, that was a ledger and I carried it to the bank in the morning if I wanted to deposit, make a deposit and the banker would write and recalculate the balance in my account actually in a, a little tiny bank book. Um, I'm old enough to remember that too. Are you? <laughs> well, if you think about that, I could not envision, and I'm sure your listeners couldn't either, uh, banking that way anymore. Now you can access uh, uh, um, uh, money moving machines, mm -hmm. ATM machines all over the country in order to draw out and, and get your balance, draw out and some funds. And outside the country. And outside <laughs> the country too. And, and so, so that's where, for example, the banking industry has moved from paper and pen to electronic. Mm -hmm. And I think some Someday, people will be surprised to talk about the day when healthcare was managed using a lot of paper and charts and missing lab results, etc. Uh, so I agree with you. The investment in health information technology is critical because it will ensure that healthcare providers have access to information about us when they need it, mm -hmm. and uh, and also it can help to prevent errors occurring. Yes. If if information is, has gone missing, for example, uh, I'm a, a former nurse, and I remember charts with, if you open them the wrong way, papers would fly every direction. Uh, so th to the extent we can move away from that system and into an electronic system, we'll be more efficient. It'll also ensure greater quality and should decrease even medical errors. And with regard to an adequate health care workforce, you were also talking about the need to prepare more health care providers. Yes. And that's another part of thinking about health care reform and ensuring that we have access uh, not just to the technology, but also to the health care providers, particularly primary care. That investment in physicians and nurse practitioners and others who are focused on keeping people healthy rather than getting health care uh, on the back end, that very expensive care, uh, if it's in an emergency